is everyone? Oh gosh, I am so, I'll tell you, I'm so excited. Why? Because oh. I have to tell you, this is very informative for everyone, but okay. I've been scrubbing my shower head. Now, the thing is, is that I a know euphemism, that's, darling? It, it, you it, it scrubber, be. you. <laughs> You see, it was I was inspired by my odd job guy who was, you know, when he put the I shock absorber in. It's yeah. just getting worse. Yeah, when he put the shock <laughs> absorber into my washing machine and I was, you know, just to stop it it's from banging much, and Dee. vibrating. Would you that, stop, I, Dee? Then I thought, we can do things. <laughs> Di what? home DIY in lockdown, So what have right? you done? What have you done with the, the shower head, darling? Can, is it still well, viewable? Well, it was, it was spurting absolutely everywhere it was going all, all right. it was coming out going everywhere so because I thought you know I could get a new one but it could be expensive mm. I thought I'll have a little go so I unscrewed it and started scrubbing it put it back and now it's perfect well Who knew, darling a little bit of cleaning would make the difference absolutely how long for though you see D I hey, hate darling. to put the, the voice, voice of doom the voice of doom <laughs> how the voice long of doom. for Sherry, why are you doom laden? Have you experience with other machines? Well, I have a very bad relationship with my Hoover, D. Maybe you could I'll pop around you. and scrub it. I yeah, will. I'll have a go. I, I've had so why? many of them because they all clog up. They get all they this do. muck in them, and they clog up. I know you're supposed to empty them. I gather that. Yes. Course, yes. But yes. Um, but they <laughs> could everything. be the problem, darling. And then if you put your finger up, the the whole thing, you know. Yeah. Um, yes. You could, you, you could, honest to God, you would lose your finger because oh. God only knows what goes up a hoover. Yeah. And I really don't. Oh. I mean, really, I I I despair at hoovers. Somebody yes. maybe out there could tell us what the best yeah. hoover is that doesn't clog up. Jerry, do you have a little hoover or a big one? Well, I've had very a big personal. one. I had a very, a very big personal one. question. Yeah, <laughs> but the big one had to go because that was too big. Now I've got yes. a little one, and it's sort of pointless. Yeah, what makes pointless. absolutely pointless. What make is it? Um, I've forgotten now. Wax, Max, Sax, Six, Sex. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> well, because I've, I've, I know I've started getting a little. I've got a little Hoover, you know, a little smaller one, which is really yes. lovely. And I had one called a Musu. I, I. Telling Harriet, it's called the Musu, and it's really, really good. The problem is having as many thousands of dogs as I have. Yeah, I have an awful lot uh, of dog hair, you see. Yeah, so it was very, very good because you just zoom it around in the morning and it's over, and it's only about 120 quid on Amazon. But wow. I had to send it back because after about six weeks, it, it was getting hot all the time. Oh, um, so then I now I've got Hoover Hoover, which is a Hoover but a little Hoover. Oh, and that's oh. And my and dream, can I, can I share my dream, Hoover, is one of those yes. things that sits on the floor and does it all by itself. It's like a robot. And you, you, and do, it works you can out the get plan them, of the room. Harriet. Can you? Yes. Can you can buy them, yes. That's my dream, but the, yes. it's a small mortgage. But I have one yes. quick thing to tell you. Somebody, and I, I don't know who it was, bought me an advent calendar of chocolate. <gasps> and, and, and I've had to have a couple because it's day two, obviously. But oh. I just wanted to share that. No, I didn't want to. So, I think it was in the paper that I read yesterday somewhere or something I read online, which was it, how many children think it's Christmas Day already because they've eaten all of the yeah. <laughs> I've never I had gone there an yet. advent calendar, oh, you know. Sherry. Darling, never. never. Because the thing really? is, I like the little doors, you see. Yes. So, you know, I like, I like when you see them in the shops just to prod the doors. But, of course, that ruined the advent calendar. So now they're full of now they're full of amazing things. But when we were little, they were just little gorgeous glitzy pictures. Chocolates. I'll say no, no, I've, I've, chocolate. seen, I've seen a gin one, Cherry. Yes, <laughs> there is one. There is one. You're that right. Sounds good one. to me. <laughs> I will say drinking you your advent a little, calendar. A little nip of gin every day. I think every I day. Sort of, and I, apart just. from that, we, I've got to ask. How are you, Sherry? Because you weren't well the other day. I'm, I'm a lot better, but, uh, and uh, you know, no cough, no, nothing like that. But it's just one of those things that overwhelms you in this weather. You know, it's either yeah. sunny or it, then it's freezing and then you get mm -hmm. cold and then the dog has to go out and I get wet. 
and don't. I just wanted those, but I'm a lot better today. Thank you for asking. Good. I'm a lot better Good. today. But, yeah. but don't forget and to take my vitamins and minerals, please. Yes, uh, I know. Yes. Yes. I'm going to those really vitamin D sprays. Yeah, Do Dr. Arnold. I'm talking about Dr. Arnold. Dr. Arnold is now about to bring in <laughs> Andrew. <laughs> gorgeous Andrew Barton, who's got Ooh. some fantastic things to tell us about Christmas presents to get and everything else. Andrew, are you there? There Hi, you Andrew. are. Hey. How are you, you doing, darling? I could have Party. my I could have my tea off your shirt. You look like a tablecloth. Oh, this, stop it, Sherry. Stop it. She's sorry this, about Sherry. This is, this is my nod to Christmas. This is my Christmas ensemble. Very, Ooh, nice. very <laughs> fetching, darling. Very, Andrew, very fetching. Lovely. Andrew, tell us what you've got for us this week. I'm um, so well, excited. I have an extra guest for Wonderbirds exclusively today. Ooh. Ooh. Never been seen before, yes. but she's going to appear today on the show. Please meet, inspired my sit by my sister-in-law. This is Yvette. Ooh. Ooh. Hello, Hello Yvette. 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 She's Yvette. very young, isn't she? <laughs> she is, but also Andrew. She is armless. <laughs> and <laughs> yes. 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 Bless her. And what are you oh. going to do with Yvette? So what I'm going to do today, ladies, um, I want to share with the viewers the key Christmas electrical styling tools buys. Oh, there's always a new tool on the market for creating great hair. So I've researched and I've found my three best favourites, and that's why Yvette is here to yes. help us demonstrate the oh, Christmas. Oh, how exciting! Buys. So my go go go. Look at this beauty. That's a big one. Oh, I love one of those. Does oh, it make it I bigger? I've never I seen one as big as that before. Oh, what is it? That is big. That is enormous. enormous. Big it hair, is honey. <laughs> I, I always love big hair, darling. It's a whopper. Big hair. Okay, so this is by Hair Tools Professional. It's a wonderful, wonderful tool. And it's how. I styled Yvette's hair earlier. So oh. I literally turn it on. Yeah. Like a hair dryer. Right. Ooh. Yeah. And it also has interchangeable heads. Ooh. Oh, we all want those. We do. Standard. What do they do that's different? There's a smaller one for kind of more kind of curl and movement. And the bigger one, which I use for Yvette's hair, to make sure that we just get that gorgeous, smooth volume through the hair. So you literally wrap it. Oh, Beautiful. fabulous. Brilliant. Wow. Oh, how great how, much, is it, how much is it? I think this is just over a hundred pounds. It's on their website. You can get it online. Right, so right. Cool. The next thing before I go any further is, there is always this myth that when you use a styling tool or heated appliance, that it's going to damage and dry your hair. That's not necessarily true. The most important thing is that when most women use a tongue or an iron, they keep repeating going over the same section every single time. And it's a little bit like ironing a beautiful kind of fabric. If you keep going over and over it, you're going to burn it. So less is more. And also, I just want to show you, this is my heat protective styling spray from my Ooh, range and that's that brilliant that every time you take a section of hair you literally right. spray the product over run your hands over it and there you've got the protection in the hair so very good that i'm going to show you this is by that brand that we all know of ghd yeah and this is a hot brush their new one called rise and literally what you do is you just wrap it around the hair hold it for a few seconds and the heat will penetrate the hair and it gives you a really gorgeous smooth movement to the hair oh brilliant oh, so that's, that's lovely that's rise by ghb right right and my next product then this is amazing. You're going to love this. <laughs> <laughs> As 
a hairdresser. This is what I've been wanting for so long. Um, and it's by that incredible brand, Babyliss. And it's another hot tool. Ooh. It looks rather well worn, darling. What, it, what is it for? I've watched that especially for you this morning, Harriet. <laughs> oh. Um, so this is, get it, wire, no wire. It's completely oh, no. battery battery operated, so you charge it up and it's got yeah. hours and hours and hours of la life long in the battery. Oh, uh, brilliant. It comes in a tong. Yeah. Oh. It also comes in a straightening iron. Wow, you find the best weapons. hot rods. Oh, uh, hot rods, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> just, and, and look at the colour of it as well, that gorgeous. Oh, oh that, that is hot. lovely. Christmas present. And just Special. Second, quiet for a second, listen to this. Oh. It stings to you when you turn it on. Well, oh. everything you want in a man. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> instant, instant heat. And the thing I love about a tong is that you, you obviously use it on dry hair. Yeah. If you go vertical, you're going to get much more of a cascading wave. Right. And then if you go horizontal and wrap it around, you're going to get a fuller effect. Wow. So they are kind of my top Christmas buys for electrical stuff. Wow. And yeah, I've really it's something else really special as well. This is a, a brand new brush that came onto the market earlier this Ooh. year. It's called Manta, and you can probably see why because of its design. It yeah. looks a bit like a Manta. Um, and it fits just oh. not your hand like that. Yeah. It, it's just perfect for brushing through the hair and smoothing either dry or it also works as the ultimate detangler as well when your hair's wet. Oh, wow. Brilliant. You can probably right, I'm going to get that. We all need that. Crushes. It's completely flexible, so it crushes in your hands. And my, my friend Tim designed this for his wife when she'd had cancer and she'd lost all of her hair. And when her hair was growing back and she'd just got this very precious hair, she said, I, I want something as gentle as using my hands to brush my hair. Yes. Oh, and lovely. He had this created and designed for her. So it's called Manta, and there's a website where you can get the product and everything. Fabulous. So, Thank you. Beautiful. Right. Thank you so much. Very exciting products to think about as Christmas gifts or Christmas gifts for yourself. Um, this Christmas. Yes. Yes. yes, fantastic. Oh, fantastic. fantastic. oh, Barty, you're amazing. Thank you. You're, you're an absolute dream. Oh, and your salon is open today, isn't it, Andrew? Yay! 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 Open today. So, yes, we're with the team are back at the salon. I'm at the salon. Uh, viewers, if you'd like to come and see me, we will fit you in before Christmas. Don't oh, wow. You. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Oh, thank you, darling. Well, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. And thank you so yeah. much for everything. Thank you, and thank you, Yvette. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Yvette. <laughs> yeah, I'm very jealous of Yvette. Oh, that's so exciting. I want wow. more. I know. I'm going to see him to have your roots done as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I can't wait. When are you, co are yeah. you coming out? When are you coming out, Sherry? When are you allowed out? When, when I'm coming out. When I'm let out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm in tier three at the moment, so. Exactly. Well, today today was the first day of freedom for us, tier two. So it's, it's been lovely. Been lovely to be able to go flapping yeah. around. Yeah. And for a cup of coffee somewhere as well. Yeah. Ooh, just, you know? Yeah. Exactly. Anyway, listen, girls, we have a wonderful actress coming in now. She played Bernice in Emmerdale and she is gorgeous and I love her. And she's also written her first book, which has done really well. So please, Ooh. please welcome Samantha Giles. Hello, Hello darling. Hello, darling. Hi, welcome to our Wonder Bird's Nest. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> How are you, darling? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, despite everything, because it's tough at the moment, isn't oh, it? Oh, it's really yeah. tough. I'm in, I'm in tier three, so that is just... 
horrendous in Manchester, but I know you're in tier two, aren't you? We are so thankful. We're, I'm I know. And we, we, had, we were in three for a while and then obviously the, the national lockdown. But since we've had this testing here in the city, I mean, it's been brilliant. And I urge everybody to go and get tested because, you know, they've been, the army have been to the schools. You can just go into any test centre without any symptoms. And it's really helped to bring all the numbers down. It's great. Really? And do you get to, are you, are you told immediately what's with your test? Is it an immediate thing? It's 10 minutes. It, it's no. Nice. I mean, we did the, when we first got tested. We did the ones at home, and then we sent them back, yeah. and that's sort of about 24, 48 hours. But when you actually go into the test center, they they do it there and then, and you are literally told, yeah. Wow. Yeah, really but they nice. need that in every city, don't they? Actually. They definitely do. They definitely do. Because what's happened is they've gone round to the schools, the army. They've done it once, say, in the schools, and they've found you know, say 30 cases of symptomless um, COVID cases, then they've gone back a week, 10 days later and tested the school and they've found none. Yeah. Wow. Oh. Definitely working. Well, that's, that's Liverpool, isn't it? It's Liverpool. Yeah. yeah. So Liverpool, what do they do? Yeah. Samantha, what do they do with those kids? So the 30 ones that had symp symptomless, uh, that, that had, it, had it, did they send them home? Yes. Yeah, they wow. get, so that's get how it works immediately, and then they have to um, self isolate and all that that stuff. Yes, yeah, but so then, but doesn't their the whole class has to go home though, don't they? It's only, um, I mean, it's different. Different schools have to do it slightly different, but generally speaking, it's if you've had close contact with any ah. of those people for longer than say half an hour. So certainly with my younger daughter, who's at junior school, um, they tend to send, so if they're all sitting on a table say, then all that table will go. Yes. Um, with my older daughter, she her friend got it just before their half term. So luckily she had two weeks half term. So we were able to isolate easily then. So she didn't miss any school actually. Oh, so, oh God. Yeah. It's exhausting the whole thing, isn't it? You know, it is. It's it's just so hard for everybody, and and I my heart goes out to people that are losing their jobs as well. You know, yeah. Yeah. businesses are going down the pan. I mean, horrendous. It's, just, it's terrible. It's terrible. It is. But darling, you've done so well. I mean, apart from your acting career, what fascinates me is this book you've written. Oh, thank you. I mean, how exciting! <laughs> Tell everybody about it. Uh, well, it's called um, Rosemary and the Witches of Pendle Hill. And um, it's basically a sort of, um, it's a middle grade book. So it's for eight to 12 year olds. And um, it's, it's based on a, on a family really. And the, the little girl in the family who's nine, nearly 10. And her, she sort of, they live with a whole group of other witches that live in the house. There's two, two male witches and two females. And they sort of, it's what she's always known kind of thing. But the dad never sees these witches. It's only her and her sister and the mum. And what <laughs> happens is one of the witches goes missing and it coincides with her dad's cloud returning above his head because Rosemary sees colours around people, she sees their auras and so on. And her dad suffers with depression periodically. So when it's sort of when he's going through a, a dark phase, she sees a cloud above his head and it and it starts raining and so on and goes black and all this kind of thing. And um, so she thinks that the, the Phyllis, the missing witch, it's linked to dad's depression coming back. So they kind of make it this mission that she's got to find Phyllis and find oh. where she's disappeared to. And then that maybe that will help her dad's cloud go. So it becomes this whole adventure mm. that they go on through a portal in the mirror, mm. in the hallway. In that oh, hallway. wow. Yeah. Yeah, so so it's, it's, it's something you've always wanted to do is right. Well, I've always kind of dabbled with, you know, poetry and things like that. And, and then I just had this burning desire. It literally just came upon me sort of thing. And I thought, I really want to write something. And I had this dream um, about these characters. And I thought, I've got to write this. And I think it was came out of wanting to do something for my children, something that they would yeah. enjoy and yeah. something that that would be left behind of me. They will always have it. Yes. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. And are you writing the next book? Yes, I am. I've just finished the sequel, actually. I've just finished writing oh, the sequel. Oh, brilliant. Oh. Which is going to get published later next year. 
it's got to turn into a series or something like well, that. It's just, you know what? Wouldn't it be great if it got a film or something? And uh, yeah, I, well, I write. I it, see it. You know, I can see it all on the screen. Yeah. So, Visually. You're probably right in a filmic way, being an actress anyway. Mm -hmm. So every, every, uh, you can see every scene already on that's that screen, right. you know, that's I why. That's yeah. how, how we would all how how lovely. We would do it, isn't it? How, how, did your acting, how did your acting start? What was the thing? Did you do it as a little girl? What was the, what led you into this journey? Well, do you know what? I always wanted to, to go into acting from very, very young and, um, not everybody knows what they want to do, do they, when they when they grow up? But no. I always wanted to do it, but I didn't really know how to because my parents were, you know, very ordinary. My dad was a fireman. My mum was a hairdresser. So quite, uh, you know, nobody had ever kind of pursued anything like that. So I begged my parents to send me to uh, like a stage school and they yeah. were totally against it. And, um, you know, I think to them, they thought, I don't know if it does cost money to do that, probably. But they were like, well, we can't, you know, can't afford it. And we're not going to go down that route. If you want to be an actor, you'll do it when you grow up kind of thing. So, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, and it's, it's a hard place for children, isn't it? All of us that have worked with, with children. You, yeah. You, it is difficult. It's, it's such an adult environment that it's it's kind of hard for children to grow up amongst that. So, so what, I, what gave you what happened next? Well, then I um, I just joined I joined an amateur drama group to get practice. Mm. And I did stuff at school and everything. And then I I did um, drama and English degree at Bristol University because I was I was kind of a bit anti going to drama school. I think I'd seen some documentary on it when I was a teenager, and it was all about sort of breaking people down to rebuild yeah. them. And I thought I I can't do that. I thought I that will destroy me, I, it mm. will destroy all my yeah. confidence. So I didn't take yeah. that route. I had a horrible three years at Bristol University instead. Oh, <laughs> oh. Well, oh, what, was your first, what was your first leap into acting then? Where did so you I go did from a, there? I did a play that um, a friend of mine at Bristol had written and we were lucky enough to have June Brown, you know, plays Dr. Oh, Dr. Brilliant. brilliant. Yeah. She Lovely. And we did that in Edinburgh. And then it just sort of started very, very, very slowly with, you know, so hard to get an agent in, in the, it's probably still hard now, isn't it, to get an agent, yeah. but it was yeah. impossible, you know, and you had that whole thing, didn't you, with equity where you couldn't yeah. get an equity card. Yeah. Yeah. You, had done, you had to do your 42 yeah. weeks in the theatre. That's right, yeah. 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 And you got your provisional that was so exciting. Yeah. Yes. Then you got your blue. But in yep. some ways, that system should come back, really, because it's yeah. Yeah. too easy for anybody just to say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm an actor. actor. I'm an actor. Yeah. I'm an actor. Yeah. So then did it build and how did you get into television and, and what was the what happened then? Well, I think my very first job was an episode of Coronation Street, funnily enough, um, ah. you know, with um, Peter... Oh God, was it was it Peter Baldwin that played... Yes. Um, I can't think of Derek. Derek. Derek, Derek. Right. Yeah. It was playing some tiny little part, his ex-wife's secretary or something. It was just a tiny mm. thing, but it was really exciting. And um, what and did your parents feel when you began to gather momentum like that? How did they feel then? I think they were thrilled. They're yeah. very. My mum's very much like you know, don't go getting any big ideas. You know, we're going <laughs> to keep on the ground. <laughs> yeah. as mums do. Yeah, yeah. stop her. <laughs> yeah. exactly so oh. it's very slow isn't it and you know yeah. lots of other jobs in between and waitressing and ironing yeah. and cleaning well, and yeah. <laughs> well Sam your your writing sounds amazing and you're talking about witches and I know that you've um well you're kind of a white witch aren't you is that what you call it well do you know what it's funny because I mean I am I only do positive good good sort of spells and kits and things but yeah in 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 wicca the laws of wicca if you like there's kind of no such thing as um black a black witch or a white witch if you like because the yeah. rules of magic are that it's harm you none really and yeah that if you were to do anything negative put, put anything negative out there spell wise it comes back on you threefold so you would never do that unless you really were you know, in some kind of very dark yeah, place, devil worship yeah. type thing. But generally, the wicker is about 
you know, revering nature and um, looking after the planet and looking after yeah. each other and, and Gorgeous. You know, rituals that we have in the Christian calendar, I suppose. Yeah. Um, like the next one you've got coming up would be Yule, winter solstice, 21st oh, of December, of which is the shortest day, isn't it? So yeah. you yeah. do things like, like candles to symbolize the light coming back into the world and stuff. Beautiful. Yeah. And Sam. A little birdie tells me that you did a spell <laughs> to find your husband. Is that correct? Is that true? <laughs> Ooh, I did, yeah. Can you, give me, can you give me one, please? I can I can <laughs> give you some ideas on how it works, definitely. So it's really about putting it out there, what you're looking for, really. So I wrote down everything. I thought very long and hard about what I wanted. So I'd had some really terrible relationships. And, uh, <laughs> and I think it's only through the bad ones that you know what you really, what's really important to you, isn't it? Yeah. So, you know, you have to be quite specific and you write everything down because writing stuff down is all part of making it real and solid real. like but be very careful what you what yeah. you want what you, what you wish for and then is, is that sam is that like visualization then is it the same kind of thing that you 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 know you draw a house or you draw but you this one you draw a man <laughs> yeah i suppose it is really it's about putting it you know making it a real thing rather than an ethereal thing in your thoughts it's yeah, yeah. It, and that's how you manifest I mean it's like the same thing with I always think vision boards are a great thing to do yeah what you'd like to achieve you know when you see a picture of something in a magazine you think oh you know it might be something like oh, I really like a car like that so you cut a picture of it out and you put it on a board and you look at it every day and you imagine yourself in that car or you know yeah whatever and uh, God, if, I had, if I had a vision board it would be the whole of my kitchen <laughs> <laughs> so Sam tell us what you're doing next now what are you up to now so um I'm just about to uh, rehearse and record we're doing this play that Kath Tilsley's written the Kath that played I think she played yeah. Eva in Coronation Street didn't she she's written a short play which is brilliant called The Ceremony and mm -hmm. there's myself there's Kath there's Sue Johnston uh Paula Lane that was in Corrie Jodie Pranger and Stephen Rahman Hughes and so we're we're all in this little play and we're recording it on uh, in Leeds City Varieties Theatre. Wow. Oh, lovely. And then it's going to be uh, streamed from the 13th of December for 10 nights. Um, wow. All, all these Fabulous. Three charities, three theatre charities. Are you doing it? Are you doing it that many times or is it one stream and then repeat no, so it? We're, you we're recording it, rehearsing and recording tomorrow, uh, Thursday, Friday. And then it's, yeah, it's going to be streamed. Live stream. Well, we yeah. really, really can't wait, really. To, we can't wait to watch it. Sam, you've been the most lovely guest. Thank you so much oh, thank for coming to see us. Much. And please fly back into our nest and see us soon. Oh, I'd love please. to. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Thank, thank you, you, Sam. Sam. Bye, Hi, darling. Bye. bye. Wow, well, what a fabulous guest. And I'm about to do my spell, so I've got to go. Ooh. But before I go <laughs> and do my spell, I'm just going to tell you that on Friday, we have Neil Oliver. Could this be oh, a sign? Brilliant. He is gorgeous brilliant. with his lovely long hair and his Scottish Hello. accent. I'm about Ooh. to go and make my Matron. spell. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Matron. Oh, oh, she's off me. to do a spell. She's gone to do her spell, dear. <laughs> Matron. do her spell. I wouldn't mind doing a spell just to have somebody to come to the house occasionally. Well, and as can, my friend said, he can fix said, everything. He can fix all your electrical things. That's right, exactly. And as my friend says, shake the mat. On that note, goodbye. Hi, darlings.